Hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to, to How Things Work. Thanks for taking time out of the, first, the middle of the first weekend here to come. Yeah, oh well. A um, few things before I start to make sure that everybody's on board with sort of the logistics of this class. There are two websites that really matter, and in addition, UVA Colab. So the two sites are the one that it's, you know, it's up here that I run myself. And the other one is the one associated with the book and the homework system, which is Wiley Plus. Someone pointed out to me that I've got a, I've got a spurious link in there to, to an old homework site that I used to use, um, Moodle. Don't, don't, that, that's from the days before the, the current version of Wiley Plus. So those two websites are what matter. Uh, UVA Colab is useful to you because I think in order to gain access, to purchase access to the the, the book website, the Wiley Plus website, you, you go into Colab for this class and click on the bookstore digital access. Is this, is this, am I right with this? That get, you only then get a code with which you can go to the Wiley Plus site. And you don't get billed until the ad drop deadline for the class. A anything else that I'm leaving out or that, that, that you all are wondering about? Okay, and I'll, and I'll remind you, you can send me messages if you don't want to speak up. I'll try to see them, okay? All right, so back, back to, to business, the, the, the topic being skating. Uh, and the topic is, I chose the topic because it really brings out sort of the simplest aspects of motion. And as we'll see as I talk about this stuff, there are so many other contexts in which the, the simple laws of motion show up. Um, Skating is nice because it gets rid of some of the nuisances of, and complexity of the real world. Like it gets rid of friction. In principle, we're, we're, you know, we're either on uh, frictionless ice or we've got perfect roller skates on or something like that. And you can sort of watch the, the motion without worrying about friction. It typically takes place on horizontal surfaces, so for interesting reasons, it, it leaves gravity out of the picture. We, and it's in our future. And air resistance, again, we're just going to ignore it. So, to, you've got to start somewhere, so we'll start without the complexities. All right? And what I was showing you last time is that, that in, whether you're skating or whether you're in some other situation where you're basically left alone, you exhibit inertia. And the world's full of, of examples of this. We'll try to look at some other ones. But if you leave something alone, and wh what it means to leave it alone is we have to deal with. Um, it, it keeps doing what it was doing. If it was stationary, it stays stationary. That's its nature. You've never seen a, a ball sitting on a table, just sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and suddenly it heads off to the right at 100 miles an hour. It, it doesn't, it, do, it, it never happens. And we'll get later in the course sort of the, the whys. Why doesn't it do that? Um, right now it's sort of an observation. And similarly, if it's moving at 100 miles an hour that way, it never suddenly ends up going the other way. It, it keeps doing what it's doing. And so we're going to pin that all down. It's OK? All right. Um, at this point, we can start sort of codifying the, the, the rules associated with, it, with, uh, with inertia and, and a simple, sort of basic, primitive version of, of, of the rule of, uh, associated with inertia. It's Newton's first law, for those of you who have encountered it before, it, in, in sort of simple language. It's if you leave something alone, if you don't bug it, it continues to move in a straight line at a steady pace. And this is an observed thing. It's, you know, if you just watch, you just keep watching. It, it actually took people, humans, centuries, millennia, to figure out that that's the case. Because in most of, you know, a lot of civilization occurred in warm areas where there wasn't ice around. Uh, and so they, you know, the friction's everywhere, and they, it just confused people. So people like Aristotle didn't get it right. Plenty smart, but he missed the boat on inertia. And so eventually, and I'm not a good historian of science, eventually people like Galileo started to figure out, oh, yeah, you know, if you really leave it alone, it keeps doing what it was doing. So you don't have to push an object to keep it moving. It does that for itself. It does that spontaneously. In fact, it, it'll turn out that you have to push on it to stop it, which is really interesting. All right, so 
That's a simple version of Newton's first law, and we can just sort of like, we can play with that again. So in keeping with this concept of flipping the classroom, I'm, it's, it's funny to put the details out there on the web to watch whenever you want to watch it. And when you watch it, you know, what's, what's best for you, I don't know. But encountering this stuff over and over again is how you ultimately learn it. And you have to encounter it where you're, where you're thinking, not just watch it like, like you're watching, uh, I don't know, whatever your favorite TV show or video or you know, YouTube is. Uh, you gotta actually sort of engage with it. But I'm gonna try not to repeat my lectures during the class endlessly, but I'll do some of it. And so uh, better I do illustrations. So, so, so a, a first illustration I wanna do is, is this one that if you know, Aristotle didn't understand inertia because the, it's, it's pretty easy to see if you push something, it moves, and if you stop pushing, it stops. That sure looks, that looks like the rule, right? But it's not the rule. The problem is friction. If you get rid of friction, this is a little air puck. So this guy now has almost no friction. The rule is if you leave it alone, it stays where it was. This is not, the table's not perfectly flat. But if you get it moving and let go, it just keeps moving. I don't have to push it to keep it moving. If, in fact, I have to push it to stop it from moving if I get a good spot on the table. I have to, I have to push on it to stop it. It wants to keep moving. Ah, I'm hooked. All right. I have, surely will have a couple good disasters during the course of the semester. Um, it's not as fun to watch an inanimate object move. How about somebody want to be a, a hoverboard pilot? Alex and Damien, you, you guys can take, take turns on this. One of you pushes, one of you rides, okay? So the idea here is that this can, let, can go up on a cushion of air also. You can ride first, Alex. All right. So, you have to center yourself on this, for, which again is for interesting reasons. You gotta get the center of gravity over the right spot, we'll get there, okay? When you pull the trigger here, you'll go up and Damien will push you to get you started and push you to stop, right? He's an object at rest. In order to move, he has to be pushed. You better go, go rescue him. <laughs> all right, you can trade, all right? And part of the fun of having these demonstrations is is for you all to try them yourself. This one's maybe less of, more fun than, than physics, but, um, whoops, you gotta, you gotta keep that, the chair centered. There you go, okay, all right. Okay, and now up you go. You got, you got, you, and off. So to get, to get Damien moving, Alex has to push him, but to keep him moving, he doesn't have to push. Okay? Thank you, guys. All right. And, and, and incidentally, when, when, when you all do volunteer to do it, I will do my best not to, do, to be embarrassing to you all, so, so please keep doing it, okay? I, I've done all these demonstrations myself, and if, you know, who cares? It's boring for, you know, to watch me do them unless something disastrous happens, then it's fun, but um, so. Your participation is really great. All right, so you, you see, you can see inertia in action. Right, things tend to keep moving it, and, it, and more, very specifically, they move at steady paces in a straight line. And it, it, typical of physicists, to move at a steady pace in a straight line includes not moving at all. So moving at no speed. Physicists are perfectly happy with that as a type of movement. I'm currently moving at zero speed. Um, sorry, I don't make the rules, that's the way it is, okay? So it includes, all, it includes the zero. Uh, okay, so other places in which this sort of situation shows up in your everyday existence. When you go to get a, a, a paper towel, do you always go up there and find this, you know, tear up badly, right? Do you always do that? No, you go, Right? Well, why didn't it move? Because for all practical purposes, I didn't bother it. I left it alone. It just stays doing what it was doing. All right? So you use that all the time. Surely you use that. Um, oh, I didn't bring out the hammer and nails. Oh, that's okay. Um, when you hammer 
when you, when you pound a nail into a, into a board, what, why, does the, why does the hammer keep going? Is, you know, what pounds the nail in? Is it you pushing the nail in by way of the hammer? Or is it just the hammer doing what it was planning on doing, inertia? You know, I could ask this as a complicated question. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's, it's an inertia thing. We'll look more carefully at that down the road. But you get the hammer moving, which is interesting. But once it's moving, it keeps going because of inertia. Just, it's pretty much obeying Newton's first law. I now realize I've been audio short here. All right. Any questions or thoughts? Uh, what I will do is, can I do this? Give you guys an opportunity to think of other examples in which inertia shows up as a really important part of some process or activity. You can tell me in, in person, you can, you can speak up or you can put them up there. Can you think of, think of things in the kitchen, for example, that use inertia? An object at rest, staying at rest, you can do all kinds of things to it. <laughs> Yeah, this is an experiment to see whether this will work. Those of you who have a great idea and want to put it up there, it's, it's, it, go to that website up there and scroll down a little bit, you'll see the message entry, the, the, the opportunity to put the message in. All right? So I'll burn a, few, a minute or two on this kind of an idea. How, you know, I, I can narrow it down to household gadgets, that if, if inertia weren't true, they wouldn't do the job some of which you may well be using this evening. It, uh, oh, and we're getting, we're, they're coming here. Ooh, butter in a hot pan. That, yeah, it'll skittle right across. Um, so, so oils, anything that's floating, floating on the pan. All right, man, it's at, happening. A bowling ball. Yeah, it keeps going. You, you toss it. It keeps going, not because you're pushing it, but because it's uh, because of inertia. <laughs> Food explodes. It hits the ceiling. I don't know exactly. Uh, seat belts, they, they lock. When, 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 you, when you stop suddenly, your seat belt locks. It's because there's a gadget in there that just keeps moving. And it, it throws the lock. Blender was actually one of the ones I was going after there with, you know, for, for tonight. A blender, why does the blender's blade come, come th through and chop up the ice or whatever else you've thrown in there? It, stuff's just sitting there minding its own business. It's an object at rest, staying at rest. The knife just slices your Hot Wheels toaster. When, when it tosses, when it tosses the, the toast up, why does the toast go up? Gravity's down. It's because you got it moving to begin with, and that, it just keeps going. It doesn't go forever because gravity does influence it. <laughs> my, my, my apple chopper, uh, bottle opener. Not sure what, where that is going. Um, can, you, can I turn the light? That, 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 is it. that is what I, uh, I forgot to do. <laughs> um, water in a sink, as it, as it moves across, it can certainly hit one and it's that. Okay, I'll, we'll call it, we'll call it, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Garburator? Hmm. Uh, the flying linguini, we definitely did that. Okay, this is great, thank you. It, bottom line, it works. You know, as I say, eventually we'll start getting the, uh, input from like some place across the globe trying to sell us stuff, but 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 we'll but we'll stick. I, I can deal with that when it happens, but we're gonna stop for right now. How do I stop? Do this and then do that. Okay. Whew. All right. So so inertia shows up in just a lot of contexts where you, where you care about, and we'll we'll encounter it over and over again. Okay. So now the the basic idea of Newton's first law that, that an object of motion. Uh, that's, that's, left, that's left to itself, keeps doing what it's doing. We, we, we need, we need to, to, to pin that down more uh, specifically. Physicists don't like to leave it that, that fuzzy. So we're going to have to start, start identifying some of the, the pieces of that law and name them and explain them. And the first one, so, so we're going we're to go through a couple of five, in fact, physical quantities. And I do have this in the lecture video. I'll, just, I'll do them today and we can make sure everybody's on board with them. So to start actually watching how the world works and to, and to pin it down carefully, you, you want 
Uh, physics actually is a quantitative field. You can say exactly what is going to happen, not, not the vague, it's going to move. You can say how it's going to move. And to do that, you need these physical quantities. And the f I'll tell you the five of them. Uh, those of you who have gone ahead have already seen these. Position, velocity, acceleration, force, and mass. So that's, that's, that's what we need here. And those, those are actually things worth knowing. Uh, I, I said last time about memorizing being, being a memorization not being a very valuable tool in this, in this class because it's, he, know these five, okay? So position is where something's located, which is fine. Uh, you do this routinely yourself, but if you actually sort of look under the hood and see what's, what is position, how, how, do you, uh, how do you say where something really is, where it's, what its position is, and it turns out you need three things for that. You need a reference point from which you're going to start that everybody agrees on. Uh, you, so my historical reference point is this, is this knob right here. So if I'm going to tell you over the telephone my position, you're going to have to know something to start with. You're going to have to know that I'm going to give it to you referenced to that dot. Okay. And now what I tell you, I tell you I'm six feet. That's not enough. I'm six feet from the dot. That, that gives you some idea where I'm located. But I could be here, or I could be here, or I could be here. Um, or I could be above it. That would be fun. Uh, so I have to tell you the direction also. So I, I have to say that I'm six feet, and it's basically south. I'm six feet south of the, do, of the knob, horizontally. You know, now you know exactly where I am. So position. It is a physical quantity. It says where something's located, and it has these pieces to it. Just a number won't do. Uh, units, I, I said six feet. We all agree on what a foot is. It's about like that. I could have said two meters-ish. Meters is this. We all agree on this, too. It, it's less, fa <clears throat> less familiar to Americans. Um, sad but true. That's about a meter. Anyway, these are standard units of distance. And the world's full of units of this and that and the other thing. And they all matter because without the units, it's very hard. You know, what's a mile? If you don't know what a mile is, you have no idea how far it is to Richmond if I told you it's 65, 70 miles. OK? So position uh, has a couple of pieces to it, the reference point. And it has an amount and a direction. And Quantities that have an amount and direction are given this fancy whoop de doo name called a vector. <gasps> and you've encountered vectors somewhere along the line, probably in a math class. And there's, somehow they're sent to you as some intimidating, complicated thing. But they're really not. They're just a more, they're just a more elaborate quantity than, this, than a simple number. And actually, a number with a unit on it is already more complicated, like 10 miles instead of just 10. So if you tell somebody you live, 10 miles south of Richmond, we know where you live. We got your position down. It's an amount and a direction, and we got a reference point. OK? So position is useful. A skater is going to have a position at any given time. And if you want to tell somebody who's not watching, who's on the phone, where they are, you do it with, by way of a position. All right, so that's first quantity. Second quantity is velocity. And velocity is not interchangeable with speed. Because velocity is, is a richer quantity than speed. Speed you know about. You've encountered that your whole life. 60 miles an hour probably means something to you. One foot per second probably means something to you. The difference between speed, which is just that, that amount, how fast you're moving, and velocity is velocity has the direction part, too. It's, it's your speed and which way you're heading. This is one foot per second to the west. Or, you know. And this is still one foot per second, but to the east. Those are different velocities. OK? So a skater who is moving steadily to the right, from your view perspective, at one foot per second has a velocity of one foot per second to the right. Any questions about that? Hopefully it's just pretty, pretty straight. Um, so that's the second quantity. Third quantity is force. 
Force is just a fancy, you know, fancy name for a push or a pull. So how much you push on it. Uh, the units, the unit, standard units of, of force in, in the states is the, is the pound. The standard units elsewhere in the world, and certainly for, for, for scientists, is the newton. Um, so it turns out one newton is about how hard a small apple pushes on your hand if you hold it because of gravity. So it's about the, to use a word in advance, weight. It's about the weight of a small apple. So it's memorable, you know, you can remember it, right? Because it's Newton. All right? So forces are the pushes and pulls of, of, of the world around us. And they too are vector quantities, meaning they have an amount and direction. A force to the right is different from a force to the left. Direction matters. We care. The influences are different. Okay? So with all that, uh, one last thing to put on that, and that is, if you look at, a, a, go back to a skater, a skater uh, is, is subject to a variety of forces, some of which we're going to ignore. The up and down stuff associated with touching the ice and the gravity and whatever, we're going to ignore. But if, but if, if uh, Felix and Otis come up to me and pull on me, it could have been Throckmorton, as, and it is Otis. Uh, if they pulled on me, and I, I'm going to get in trouble because someday I'm going to have somebody in my class who's going to be upset about that. Um, if they both pull on me simultaneously in, 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 in opposite directions and equally hard, not much is going to happen to me except I'll get stretched. So what we're going to pay attention to, and, and it's, it's useful in the, uh, now, is what's called net force. The, the, not just the individual forces acting on an object, all listed, but rather the, the forces acting on an object added. And when you add them or sum them, you actually have to pay attention to the directions. Because, who did I say, Otis and, well, Throckmorton's in here now. They're, 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 if they pull me in opposite directions, this is, has very little effect on me. If they pull me in the same direction, that has a big effect on me. So, th so how we add those directions, th those forces uh, matters. But the bottom line is, I would experience, I the skater, would experience what's called a net force. The sum of all the forces taking into account direction. And you know, typical physics classes get that now would now get lost for a week in calculating net forces. Free body diagrams, all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna do that. Just the idea that you, you know, if you if, if if several external things are conspiring to push a skater toward you, the skater's gonna do something toward you. If they are, however, fighting over, over them, it's going to sum to, you know, could sum to zero. That is, that they add up and nothing happens overall. All right? So that's the idea of net force. Um, the, in net, the net force on an object, and, and this is necessary for, the, for our future, the net force on an object are only the forces on that object, not on other objects or variety of possibilities. And that's a lot like, like net income. Your net income is you know, the, the money you get from the, your paper route, you know, the money that you get for working at the food place, whatever. They're all money coming to you, right? It doesn't matter that, that Sam and, and Ethel are exchanging money. That's not, it has no, nothing to do with you. And actually, um, if you give money to somebody else, that doesn't affect, it affects you in a different way, but, but that's still, the money's not coming in as income. And the same thing's true of forces. The force that, that, you, that people exert on you affects you. The forces you exert on other things, they don't affect you, they affect the other things. Leave them out, and we'll come back to that. I mean, I'm, I'm setting the stage for down the road. Okay, so the net force. Um, we can now, I can now t say Newton's first law the way it's sort of formally presented. And so this, this describes quantitatively the idea of inertia. And that is that an object that's free of external forces or that has zero net force. So there's overall, no overall external influence. Object that's free of external, influ of, uh, external forces moves at constant velocity. Now where does the constant velocity come from? Remember, velocity is speed and direction of travel. If you have a constant velocity, that means that your speed is steady 
and your direction of travel is steady. You're moving in a straight line. So that's, that constant velocity is the straight line motion of an, of an inertial object. And I'll, I'll use the word inertial object, inertial, or just inertial in general from time to time. And just, because it just falls out of my mouth, I can't help it. And it just means an object that is moving according to inertia, Newton's first law. It's, it's not, it has no net force on it, zero net force. Is that okay? So inertial objects, just they coast. And again, that includes not moving at all. Not moving at all is just a weird special case. Zero velocity is, my velocity right now is zero and it's staying that way. I'm an inertial object. The net force on me is zero. All right? Uh, All right, this is a, you know, the, the long segment of me talking. I'll get back to stuff. Okay, two more physical quantities left. I, I gave you three so far. Position, remember that, sort of set it aside. Velocity, that turned out to be important for Newton's first law. And force, particularly net force, turned out to be important. Okay, so what's left? Acceleration. And acceleration is one you, you it's, it's used in common language but, let, but we gotta pin it down. It's, it's not so intuitive. It's not so easy to see either. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing with time. For those of you who have taken calculus, incidentally, and that's a lot of you, the, the, probably the best venue for examples of, of calculus is physics and the laws of motion. I mean, it's just rich with that. I'm not gonna do calculus stuff. Like, so if you know it, great. If you don't know it, great. Um, however, just as a secret to those of you who are in the know, uh, acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. It's how velocity is changing with time. It's the derivative. Uh, velocity, incidentally, is the time derivative of position. Okay, back to normal, right? I didn't say anything, right? That was secret. Acceleration is the change of velocity with time, and to see it, you've got to watch the velocity of something and you gotta watch the velocity change. So I'm gonna illustrate human, my human animation stuff, which I, I'll, I'll do my best. I can't talk and do at the same time. I'm, an, I'm, I'm hopeless, but I'll give my best shot. So let me show you acceleration. And I'll anticipate the issues. You have to watch, sequen you have to watch sequentially to see, to see acceleration. In fact, to see position, you only have to look once. One glance, you know where something is. If you want to see what its velocity is, you have to glance twice. You look once, and then you look again, and it's moved. Oh, you, know, you know it had a velocity. It's not zero. It moved from there to there in about a second. OK, we know the velocity. To see acceleration, you've got to do, glance three times. You got to do two glances gives you the velocity once, initially. And the third glance tells you, did the velocity change? All right? So looking for acceleration. So, so here's me not accelerating. This is the most boring version. My velocity is zero, and it's staying zero. I'm now going to accelerate to your left. And I'm only going to do it while my hand is pointing that way. And then I'm going to stop accelerating. So here we go. I'm accelerating, and then I'm going to stop. And I keep going, because my velocity settled out. During, you know, I, need, I need room to do this, and I need to think while I'm doing it. OK, so not accelerating. Velocity zero, staying zero. I'm now, I'll do this slowly, little acceleration. I'm starting to develop a, a rightward velocity that's getting bigger and bigger. I'm continuing to accelerate. And now I'm gonna stop accelerating, which means I coast. Coasting and inertial, they all go together. I'm moving at constant velocity and I ran out of room. All right? So can you start to see acceleration? And incidentally, acceleration is caused by a force. It's not inertial. You can't accelerate unless something pushes on you. Rule of the universe. Um, so that's acceleration. I should point out that acceleration, being a vector quantity, like the other guys, can be interesting and complicated. I can move to the right, but that doesn't mean I accelerate to the right. For example, let me get started. The story hasn't started yet. I'm now, OK. This, now the story has started. I'm moving at constant velocity to your right. I'm about to accelerate to your left. Here I go. 
my velocity is changing. I slow, for, initially I slowed down, and now I'm picking up speed. You know, I go out the window or the door. All right, I can stop, end of story, okay? It is possible, in that, in that case, I was moving, my velocity was to the right, but my acceleration was to the left. That means slowing down. I'm losing my rightward velocity. And once I come to a stop, momentarily, there's only an instant when I'm stopped, and then I start picking up speed to the left, which means I'm continuing to accelerate to the left, I'm developing more and more leftward velocity. All right? So don't assume that acceleration and velocity are in the same direction. In fact, there's an interesting one here. What happens if I'm moving to your right and I accelerate away from you? That means my, I, my velocity is this way to initially, but I'm accelerating away from you. That turns my velocity. And I end up, if I, if I choose the right path, I go in a circle. This is not an inertial mo movement. You've never seen something left to itself going in a circle. Okay, you know, you can, you, you can see something, yeah, it, it looks like they're left to themselves. Oh, no, nobody likes me, I'm gonna go in a circle. Um, but there is something pushing for that to happen. Is that okay? So, having said that, okay, so that's, so that's acceleration. I've got more to, more to say. Any questions about acceleration, things, you, things you're wondering about? How is position different from, a, from, from vector? Vec so I, I do have a question here. Vector is the concept of a quantity that has two parts, an amount, such as 10 feet, and a direction, which is, you, you, can't, you can't blend them into one thing. They're two separate ideas. They're glued together permanently, and they're called a vector. It's just like somebody gives you a message, it has two parts to the message. That's one, it's one message quantity, but it's got two important separate parts, okay? Uh, vect so vectors are, have the two parts. A, quant a physical quantity that has, has no direction aspect to it, it's just an amount, is called, it's got a fancy name too, it's called a scalar, with two A's, scale R. Um, and oddly, th this is not where it ends. There are scalars, vectors, and there are things more complicated than that. Okay, but uh, four of the physical quantities I, I'm currently caring about are vectors. I can't make that not happen, they're there. Uh, force is a vector, acceleration is a vector. Incidentally, yeah, force, it turns out, causes acceleration. More particularly, net force causes acceleration, and they're in the same direction. So if everybody conspires to push the skater to the right, the skater's gonna accelerate to the right, not in some willy-nilly random other direction, all right? My car eventually stops when I'm coasting, but inertia says it shouldn't. If there were no friction and you're on a level ground and no air resistance and no internal friction in the car, you would actually continue going forever. So when you get your car up and going and coasting or your bicycle or your roller skates or your skateboard, in, in, in the best of all possible worlds, the unrealistic, free of all the little nuisances, you would go forever. Um, it doesn't happen on Earth. It happens in space, where some of these, you know, the Voyagers, they were launched sometime during my lifetime, but before, your, before yours, they've been going. They're still going. They're, they're, they're out of the solar system. They're just going to keep going. They're going to go to the end of the universe. I mean, unless the very unlikely thing happens that it hits something. They're just going to keep going. And why? It's because there are objects in motion, continuing in motion, and nothing's going to stop them. It's a little bit of an overstatement because there, there actually are atoms out there, molecules, and, and you know, okay, they're gonna, they'll lose speed a little bit, but basically they're, they're, they're free-range chickens going off forever. Is that okay? Uh, would seconds or time be a scalar? Yes, 10 seconds, no direction to it. That's exactly right. And uh, so do rockets not use engines after they leave the atmosphere? Rockets may well use engines to keep changing their path. And uh, spacecraft near the Earth experience the Earth's gravity, which we'll come to, too. And so their paths are not exactly straight either. But once you get free enough of the, the, the gravity and, and the atmosphere and stuff, 
Coasting is, is the dominant effect, and then just keep going. And so you see in movies, you see the rocket with the exhaust plume blasting away in, while they're in deep space. No, in deep space, you coast. Once you're moving, you keep moving for free. Turn off the engine, save the, save the fuel. Um, off you go, okay? So this is part of like, like change your intuition. You, you, you watch a lot of stuff in the movies, it's just, it's just wrong, okay? And the physicists are going like, oh, ah, and okay. You hear a few of them expire, I'm sure. Uh, if, if there's no resistance, how can an engine change path? If, if you want, if, for example, if that's a ref reference to, to, a, to a spacecraft, if a spacecraft is out there with no friction and they're going right towards, I don't know, Alpha Centauri or something, they're going, and they want to just change, you know, there's a, a, a Hardy's over there, they want to go and take a stop, okay? What are they gonna do? They can't grab on stuff. They have to get something to push them there because they're gonna keep going straight and true. So they have to have something push on them. What do they push on? They push on their fuel. We'll come to this with rockets. They actually have the fuel push on them. They, they, they turn on their engine, which throws fuel one way. The fuel pushes back. Action, reaction, which is in our future. And they actually get pushed towards the, the, the fast food joint by their own fuel. Um, you don't have any fuel, you just start taking the deck chairs and throw them out. You throw it that way, it pushes you that way, and off you go. All right? Is velocity a vector quantity? Absolutely. Okay? This is a velocity to the right, this is a velocity to the left. Direction matters enormously. You care. You care whether the car in front of you is going 60 miles an hour forward or 60 miles an hour backward, right? Okay. Um, last physical quantity to bring up, and this is a, the, the first one I bring up that's a scalar, it's just an amount. It's called mass, a name you've heard before. But what is mass? Mass is an, it's the measure of an object's inertia, how hard it is to make that object accelerate. And, as you, as you, as you, as you know, a, a, a small mass of sugar, like a, like a packet that has, that has one little unit of mass, the gram. A gram is a, is a unit of mass. So one gram packet of, of sugar is easy to accelerate. You can take it from motionless to moving very easily. Little force, little time. Um, a kilogram, which is actually the, the, the metric standard of mass, a kilogram of sugar, much harder to, to get going. So examples, this has got a little mass. I can, I can watch it, I can make it accelerate very easily. This is, this is acceleration. It went from motionless to heading to the right. It went from heading to the right to heading to the left. Heading to the right, lots of acceleration here. And consequently, um, for that it's easy to do. I don't have my bowling ball here, but the bowl, a bowling ball, if I ever had a bowling ball, I, I could shake the bowling ball much harder to do because it's got much more mass. Okay, so mass, mass has nothing to do with gravity. In a world that had no gravity, you'd still have mass. It's the resistance, and I always think it as an object's resistance to acceleration, how much it fights. It fight, and, and the shaking motion is rich with acceleration, and therefore, an object that's easy to shake has a little mass. An object that's hard to shake has a big mass. Is that okay? So, and I'm almost done with my talking, then can get on to other things. This leads us to another major law of, of physics, what's, what's called Newton's second law. And Newton's second law of motion says, and I want to say it this way when, right, that if you take the net force on an object, so, so look, think of a skater. If you add up all the forces on the skater and take into account the direction, Whatever the sum comes out to be, for example, it might come out to a certain number of, of standard units, newtons, to the right. Take that net force, divide it by the mass of the skater, how much she resists acceleration, and that, that ratio, the force, which has a direction to it instantly, divided by the mass, gives you the, the skater's acceleration. That, that will predict how much she will accelerate. 
both how fast, how much, how quickly she'll she'll change her her velocity, and in which direction. All right. So that's Newton's second law, the way I like it. That is, take the net force divided by the mass of the net force on the object. I want to put all the words in. Divide that by the mass of the object. That will give you the acceleration of the object. You, many of you, have encountered that same law in a different form, and even abbreviated down to F equals MA. And F equals MA, I consider to be kind of an icky form of that. Uh, it's true, but it throws out all the context and all the, the meaning. It hides the meaning. It, I, I assume it, it, it's popular because it doesn't involve division. And, and writing, writing a formula that the net force, yes, I am so old school, I actually use a chalkboard, mass. So this is, this is the influence on the skater divided by the skater's resistance to that influence gives you the acceleration. OK, once you've got an equation like that, you can start hacking at it algebraically. First off, you can leave off all the, the letters, most letters, and write it like this. And then you can go, oh, gee, F, over, F divided by M. You can just multiply both sides by M, and you get F equals MA. Great. But it's killed all the meaning. Is that OK? So the context matters. If you have some random F around and some random M. <laughs> Let's, a random M and a random A, multiply them together is not going to give you an, a, the F you want. It, you got to go into the context. The context is, is the one where you're looking at one object and you're seeing the net force on that object, the mass of the object, and the acceleration of the object. <sighs> is that OK? I mean, I could harp on it forever. But don't. It's not the force on, the, on that chair times the mass of that table gives you acceleration of the moon. You know, you blew the context. All right. That said, I can now pull out my click, you know, your clicker is the last thing you want to be pulling out at, the la at this moment. But, but let's try this. Here's, a Here's a, one of these clicker questions. Which of the following objects is accelerating? Yes, actually, you have to turn on your thinking caps. Oh, there we go. So, so which of the objects is accelerating? Ooh, you guys are pretty good. The, the early voters are spot on. All right, and now I'll do something a little fun here, and that is to turn on the, there we go. Now you can't see. Make, make, to make those of you, how do I make, I can't make it, I can't make it any smaller. Oh. All right. Okay, we did, we, we, we got as much value out of this as, I'll stop, I'll stop the polling. You'll see D, D, D one big, D is the right answer here. And, and so look at, the, let's, you know, look at the issues here. A hockey puck that's moving across ice at constant velocity. Man, that's exhibiting the motion of an inertial object, constant velocity. You know the net force is zero. It's, it's just handed, that one's handed to you, I hope. Um, and I should also say, I don't mean to ridicule anybody ever here. Um, this is hard stuff various levels, so, so don't, don't let me tease you. Um, an elevator rider moving straight up toward the, the 100th floor at constant speed. This is most of the intermediate uh, time in an elevator, you're moving steadily up or you're moving steadily down. Constant velocity. There are individual forces on you, but they sum to zero, and you are coasting. So as you're heading up, the Empire State Building or the Burj Khalifa, you are coasting. Not at the beginning, not at the end, 
but in the middle. Is that okay? Um, an escalator rider moving steadily you know, toward the, one of the exits, up or down, it's, it's constant velocity. Believe it or not you're, not, you're you're not being pushed toward the exit or away from the exit. Your, your net force on you is zero. You're coasting. There are individual forces, which is interesting. You're actually being supported by the stair against gravity down. So you're being pushed up by the stair, but otherwise you're keeping going towards the landing by inertia alone. All right, and the last one, the merry-go-round. When you're traveling in a circle, you're not inertial. Something is pushing you. Nothing you've ever seen travels in a circle without help. That is not an inertial motion. Okay? I'll get rid of this. And I think I got another one. So here's another one. Is there a net force? And then I can show you a couple last demonstrations and call it a day. Um, which of the following objects is experiencing a net force of zero? I'll give you a couple more seconds here. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is it, it, it is A. These are all these objects the hockey puck coasting, the elevator rider coasting, the escalator rider coasting, they're net force zero. All right. Um, let me show you last couple of, of demonstrations things. Um, first one is I've got four cans up here set to roll if, if, if they want to. How, how can I figure out which ones are full and which ones are empty? Any suggestions? I mean, with, without touching. I'm allowed to breathe, though. Just blow on them, right? Okay. Thank you for the answer, right? <laughs> that one. <laughs> a very tiny force manages to get the empty ones to accelerate because their mass is so dinky. So if you ever encounter something that's like, like you, you're working at the airport and, you want, and, and you've got these closed containers with wheels and you can't remember which one's full and which one's empty, shake them. You don't have to lift them. That's hard. Shake them. The, he the full one won't be hard to shake. The light one won't be easy to shake. Two more things. Now this, is, this goes into the, into the tools for living. You've got sauce, whatever it is, your favorite uh, or your sunscreen, whatever. And there's only a little bit left in the bottom. How do you get it to the mouth? You, you, you shake it. Well, I mean, you could do this, which is get it moving and then stop it. And it will tend to keep going, right? But you know, what is this called? Ex expert, uh, I swing it in a circle, like that. And this is an, this is an acceleration, right? When I went th like this, I'm accelerating, okay? So, so this is actually the most effective approach. And it, it, goes, it goes to the outside, and you can, you can think of this, that people do think of this as some sort of force pushing out there, which they give a name, centrifugal. It's not a force. It's, just, it's the stuff trying to go straight and, not, and, and you having trouble with that. So I, I now swung it all to the bottom. So now there's, oh, there's nothing here, nothing here, OK? But, but if I put the, 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 the neck at the end and swing it like that, now, you know, sauce, right? OK. <laughs> Sorry. All right, the other one, crucial. Your socks are all bunched up like this. And you can go and you can pull them out, right? No. Get the sock moving and then stop the neck. Right? It's just inertia. All right? So now you have all these great tools. You'll save all kinds of time with the laundry and see you. Oh, no class Monday. I won't be here. You won't be here. See you on Wednesday.